Hey guys, Kiwi here. In this video, I'll be breaking down and discussing Rick Grimes' final episode of The Walking Dead, Season 9, Episode 5, What Comes After. In this video, I'll be giving my initial reactions and opinions to this amazing episode, setting up the future to the franchise. So, with that being said, major warning of spoilers for everything in the show up to Episode 905. Seriously, watch that episode, come back hereafter, let's talk about it, let's just jump right into it. So, Holy fuck, where do I even begin? This was actually a good episode. I don't feel disappointed. I I feel positive things and not negative things, and that's really good. For once, I have to say, good job, Scott Gimple. I, I haven't really been proud of him since, well, for a few seasons now. He's been, he's been doing some weird things, but I think he might be starting to redeem himself. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I might be getting too ahead of myself, but first off, the elephant in the room has been lifted. I feel like I can actually go back and enjoy the entirety of Season 9 now that I feel this sense of relief off my shoulders. The Walking Dead Season 9 has been amazing so far, and I love the way that they set up Season 9A for Rick's departure, along with starting the new beginning for Episode 906, but that's a separate discussion I'll jump into more when I break down the promo trailers for Episode 906. That aside, my point still stands where I feel like I can truly enjoy the season now. I can't wait to go back and rewatch the first five episodes in anticipation of episode six next week. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves again, let's briefly go through the episode and hit a bunch of major key points throughout the episode as I explain my reactions to all the different twists and turns, because there were a lot of different emotions going on. So I had heard of the Rick Grimes movie theory, and I also heard of the Jada Saving Rick theory, we talked about it, but I completely shut off social media the day the episode aired so I wouldn't get spoiled. So it was nice not feeling spoiled as I wasn't waiting all episode for a certain spoiler that I heard to happen, like when I knew about Carl's death for example, but moving on I also wanted to throw out there that I'm going to create another video also breaking down all of Rick's major dream sequences such as conversations with Shane, Herschel, and Sasha along with the true meaning of the dream sequences and why they were so important to push Rick forward to truly accomplish his goal by the end of the episode. This episode was just a freaking roller coaster of emotions, those dream sequences were just amazing and I honestly don't know where to start so I guess let's go through chronologically. First off, there's Rick pulling himself off of the rebar. We knew he'd eventually make his way onto his horse to lure the herd away, but it was still nuts to see him pull himself off with his belt. That was just so horrible. I was holding my side the entire time, and then when it cut to the Jada sneak peek, I just instantly became disappointed and annoyed that she appeared to be lying to the man through the walkie-talkie, as I really was hoping that this scene would have came later on with Rick actually in the back of her truck. After seeing the very end of the episode, though, I guess I can't complain so I digress. Anyways, as Rick fades in and out of consciousness throughout the entire episode, they made no shortage of worrisome moments that made me feel like he might have gotten bitten or eaten right then and there. And as he has a multitude of dream sequences, I was just eating up all the nostalgia and it made me quite emotional as well, especially during Herschel's part with the recent passing of Scott Wilson and all. The acting was brilliant, the dialogue was amazing, and it just helped push forward the vibe of the episode as Rick kept pushing onward further. And then when he eventually ends up at the camp to the bridge, seeing it all run down and destroyed, it must have crushed his heart. I predicted that it was a possibility that he would have accidentally turned around, leading the horde back to the camp, as I didn't know whether he'd intentionally or accidentally wind up leading the zombies across the bridge like Daryl had originally suggested. It seems as though it was accidental as Rick just so happened to stumble into the workers' camp, at least that's what I perceived from it, but after the horde caught up with them due to the gunshots from his revolver going off, he ran out onto the road, and then the bridge was just kind of right in front of him, so I don't think it was his original plan, but on a whim, he decided to go for it as he had no other option. He was pretty much on his deathbed, and with that in mind, with nothing else to lose, he decided to suck it up and get rid of his bridge. I mean, the camp was destroyed anyways, who knows where everyone else was, he just wanted to get rid of this horde and do one more final good deed. And so with Rick crossing over the bridge, I'd just like to take a moment to acknowledge that, at least to him, it seemed like all of his hard work this season was for naught. Rick was devastated to see his camp deserted and dead, but this was his hard lesson to learn when it comes to pushing enemies to live closer together than they're comfortable, especially without a proper resolution for previous crimes. Now if you want to see a full breakdown on how I think they should have handled punishing a rot and all the saviors for what they did to Oceanside instead of killing them, along with just the saviors in general that have done 
done wrong during or before All Out War, along with why Michonne has the correct idea to create government between all the communities with common laws. Check out my recent video discussing that, and hopefully she will have done that during the six year time skip. Anyways, I did initially have a minor complaint on how we never saw the full outburst at the camp with all the gunshots. We only heard distant gunshots as we saw the horse run away, and then we saw Daryl and Rick reacting to hearing gunshots, but now it all makes sense why it was never initially revealed as we can now see the aftermath alongside Rick's shock of it all. The whole season, Rick has just been trying so hard because of Carl's vision to get the communities to live alongside each other in harmony up until the very end end and it seemed as though it was all crashing down along with him. The Oceanside murdering all the saviors caused even more of a feud between the communities as the construction crew for the bridge up and left, they didn't know how they were going to save the bridge and as if that wasn't bad enough, Maggie went to go kill Negan with Daryl and Oceanside conspiring against Rick so he'd never be able to talk her down. Now thankfully all Maggie needed to do was see Negan rotting in his cell to know that she was getting justice for Glenn's death after all the whole time, but since Rick is going off on his own to do movies and whatnot over the next six years and over the next few years in real life, who knows how long it'll take Rick to eventually return to Alexandria and have the movies and the show cross over and have Rick realize that Negan is still alive along with telling everyone else that he is still alive himself. And again, I'll get more into theories about what the movies might be in future videos, along with how they'll eventually have to connect and cross them back over with the show, but this video would be like an hour long if I started rambling about all that now. And speaking of which, as far as the whole Maggie and Negan situation goes, I'll be breaking that down in its entirety on its own because the confrontation between them was ripped out and inspired from the, one of the recent issues from the comics as they decided to put this scene in the show now instead of waiting until season since 10 or 11 when it was kind of supposed to happen because Maggie is leaving the show in the next episode as well. And oh my god, I just thought about that. Is Maggie's kid going to be grown up as well? We're going to see Herschel Jr. six years old and then Maggie's going to leave the show for some reason after this six year time jump? What the heck is going to happen there? I'm going to have to discuss that in a separate video as well. Jeez, there's just, there's just so much to do right now. There's just so much to talk about with this show. This is crazy. I love this. And so... The next twist that I wanted to break down was the answer to the burning question of where the heck did all these people running past Rick from the trailer come from? It, this was shown way back in the summer during one of my recent prediction videos just this past week. I also speculated the possibility that Rick was just imagining all of these people running past him because it didn't make sense as to how they were there and then they uh, suddenly they weren't there when Rick was walking across the bridge alone with the horde and so it turned out to be true. Moments like this happened constantly throughout the episode where it's something that I predicted or something that I was thinking about or speculating as it was going on and I honestly appreciate all the twists and turns, especially due to how fun it was to speculate was going to happen the entire time, which again was part of not truly knowing any of the spoilers. But then on the other hand, when it got to the point that Daryl and the gang actually got there, it took me a minute to fully believe that they were truly there. After the fake out that we just had, even though Daryl was continuously saving Rick by headshotting the nearby zombies approaching him. I was like, is this really real? Is this actually happening? Are the, are the zombies really that close? For all we know, the zombies could still be just halfway across the bridge and, and then we could get another fake out like in those old movies where someone wakes up and it was all a dream, but then they wake up again and then they wake up again, and I, I don't know, I'm just glad that didn't happen. I'm glad we only got faked out once, so after I fully accepted the fact that what I was witnessing was indeed real, I believed that Rick was going to blow up in the explosion. The second that I saw the camera pan over to the dynamite, I was like, oh my god, this is how it's gonna go out. It's gonna be finite, he's gonna be dead from an explosion, he's not coming back from that. I honestly thought that Rick was dead there, so I can see how everyone else in the show would write him off as well. It's actually great how they did this because although it sucks that Rick disappears for six years, they did it in such a way where everyone saw what they believed to be his death right in front of their own eyes so they won't be out searching for him. I just find it funny how they totally retconned Jadis' character to become the link between Rick leaving the show after she had such a negative response during season 7 and 8 and I was a part of that by the way, I didn't like the junkyard group, I thought it was unrealistic and a waste of time and kind of pointless 
this, but Jadis is off the show now. I don't really dislike her anymore. I kind of think that Anne is an interesting character, although I can't help but still call her Jadis, just kind of like in Fear the Walking Dead when Naomi has like four different names. I don't really care, whatever, but the helicopter mystery will be pushed off into a separate story alongside Jadis and Rick now as well, which thank God he isn't dead. What a relief, right? It sucks how Jadis and Rick actually disappear for six years, so there better be some damn good reason as to why Rick never returned during that time skip, but as I said, we'll get into the movie theories during a future video. And then to end off the episode, after Rick gets saved in the helicopter, I was surprised to see the introduction of Magnus character at the end of the episode, but it makes sense why they would introduce them during the end of Rick's last episode in order to hopefully grab some people onto the continuation of the story, instead of just waiting until next episode since so many people have said that they'd stop watching the show after Rick's final episode aired and I feel like they knew that that would happen. So in the comics, they brought the readers into the New Beginning time skip alongside Magnus Group and it seems as though they're truly rebooting the New Beginning on the show to do that. With the episode ending off showing the little ass kicker, Judith Grimes all grown up, well, grown up relatively to what we're used to, the episode ends on just about the highest note that they could have wished for. I actually felt great about the end of this episode. I absolutely loved the conclusion. That was just an amazing note to end off on. I absolutely love the conclusion of this, but what did you guys think of the episode? Are you happy with the outcome, or are you pissed off that they deceived us with this whole loophole advertising of Rick's final episodes? Initially, I figured that I'd be super mad if they, you know, advertise it as being his final episode, implying that he's going to die, and then he just ends up not dying, but it did actually end up being his final episode because he is leaving the show, so that is partly true, but that is just a stupid loophole and it's kind of unfair to the fans, although I don't think it's quite as bad as the Glenn Dumpster situation. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, I'll discuss it and elaborate it more in the future, but that's pretty much it for this video guys. Let me know what you thought about the entire situation in the comments below, and leave a like on the video if you've enjoyed anything I've said today, I'd definitely appreciate it, it helps me out more than you can imagine. Feel free to subscribe for more Walking Dead content in the near future, as you can tell there's a lot to talk about right now, and if you'd like to take that extra step in helping support the channel, consider checking out the Patreon as well. Follow me on Twitter too, link to both of those in the description. I'm fairly active on Twitter even when I'm not posting videos, and I'm always retweeting everything I can involving the Walking Dead universe. But anyways guys, as always, this has been a crazy ride, but I thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out!